Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to the Life Learners Podcast. Hope you all are doing well today. I really can't believe that September is almost over. Um, we're entering into the latter half of the month and it's already turning into October. It's time to start pulling out your, your um, autumn and winter sweaters and, and, and wearing maybe straps instead of wearing rubber uh, straps on your watch, wearing uh, leather straps, um, which is always a fun sort of transition for a watch collector. Today I wanted to discuss um, the concept of box and papers when, when it comes to um, uh, watch collecting and, and, and buying watches. I think there's oftentimes a discussion about um, whether a watch should come with its original box and its original paperwork that it was sold with and how that influences the price of, of, a, of a watch on, um, on, on the market. Um, and so I wanted to talk through a couple of things. I'm going to be using a watch that I have today. Um, that is uh, kind of uh, hits home with a lot of the things that we're going to discuss on this podcast. Um, This watch is a Longines sort of tank style uh, watch. Um, The watch is um, does come with its original box and some original paperwork. It doesn't have the original purchase receipt and all of that stuff but for a watch from 1951 um, it's pretty amazing that it does come with um, its original box and some of the paperwork that came with the uh, with the watch when it was originally sold in 1951. Um, the, I'll, the, I'll put a link in the uh, description to the uh, to this watch so you can at least uh, see some pictures of it, see some pictures of the things that I'm going to be talking about with this watch. Um, it's a tank style watch um, that runs on the Longines Caliber 9L manual wind movement, which is a fairly well-known um, movement used by Longines during this time period. So um, this watch actually comes with the original outer box, which is um, <laughs> kind of funny actually when you when you look at it. Um, the the original outer box is red and it's uh, it's has it right it reads a Longines Wittenauer product. And <laughs> interestingly, when you turn it over. It actually says the box was made in Sweden, which I thought was kind of ironic. If you don't know, Longines Wittenauer was sort of the Longines watches that were sold in the um, the United States of America. So it has the original outer box. It then also comes with um, this little booklet that says how to treat your watch for best service. And it sort of goes into how to use it. It talks about winding your watch, preferably at the same hour in the morning before putting it on, never whilst on the wrist. Interestingly, it writes that, um, and then it has an asterisk that says accept automatic watches, which I thought was kind of interesting. The second point um, is while while some watches are equipped with a shockproof feature, this lessens but does not eliminate the possibility of damage if a watch is dropped or receives a solid shock. Care is recommended, so kind of the shock uh, side of things. Third, uh, rust damage may rust damage as many watches. Even a waterproof watch can rust if subjected to extreme changes or temperatures. Be sure to avoid wetting a watch and remove your watch if um, perspiring freely. Number four, due to their small size, a speak a speck of uh, dust can spoil the, the good timekeeping of a watch. Damaged crystals should be replaced immediately. Ladies should not carry watches in their handbags with face powder because of lint. Watches should not be worn in bed. And the last point is good timekeeping requires that the watch that the polished jewels are. Good timekeeping requires that the polished jewels of a watch which act as bearings should be lubricated in time. The oil dries out and then the watch should be cleaned and re-oiled. And the whole thing is there's a little blurb that sort of goes into the idea that um, you should protect your investment that so that your watch can run for many many years it then also has this little booklet that i think is so cool and it's about treasuring your long jeans the world's most honored watches and it talks about how they're the winner of 10 grand prizes at the world's fair and the highest honors in observatory actually tested it has a sort of an introduction section it then goes into a section that talks about how to care for your long jeans watch a section about how the balance wheel travels 3,558, 3,558 and a half miles per year, which is pretty incredible when you think about it. Something so small it has a section about all Longines watch parts are interchangeable. We're talking about the serviceability, seven reasons why you will be proud of your Longines watch. It has a picture of a Longines factory. Um, some different parts of that. Um, 
it talks about how Longines was the first watch for, of aviation. It's the official watch for time, timing world's aviation records. Awards of the world's. talks about some of the awards that it's worn, it's, that Longines has won. The National Observatory Awards, recent honors. And then there's a section about the service memorandum, which is, on, it is not filled in. It also has on the back um, the the um, the uh, sort of um, serial numbers for the watch. So it it doesn't have the original purchase papers for it or anything like that, but um, still a pretty cool little piece of history. It then has the outer uh, the um, inner box that the watch comes on, sits nicely on this um, sort of cushion. And then it also has a little um, stand that describes that the price of this watch originally was $71.50, um, which is kind of cool to think about. You've got, you know, you can imagine this watch sort of sitting in, in the um, window of a, um, of a, of a, of a shop um, and uh, people looking at it and, and, and all of that. I think it's, um, I don't know, it's, pretty pretty cool to uh, to think about if you actually take the original price of this watch and you adjust it for inflation you're actually looking at a watch that would today cost about 830 840 uh, US dollars which is kind of cool to also think about so I've sort of gone over what this watch comes with but I really wanted to have a discussion um, you know I've talked about what, what is with this watch, but what I wanted to discuss is sort of the concept behind whether or not having box and papers for a watch is really, um, really important. Now, I think there's two schools of thought, right? There's one that, school of thought that says, if a watch doesn't have its original box and papers, you start questioning the history of it, and it makes it difficult to, to trace um, the history of the watch, its services, and who owned it. But then there's another school of thought that says it's all right if it doesn't have the box and papers. Some people lose it. It's not really significant. I don't really know where I land on this. I think it's. I think it really depends on on every, on the individual watch that you're purchasing. I do think that having the original box and papers allows you to trace the watch a little bit deeper, especially if you have things like the original purchase receipt, because I think that allows you to see when it was purchased, who purchased it, and then ask questions about you know, how many owners the watch had had, if, if the person um, who has the watch and doesn't match sort of the original paperwork. I think it also allows you to understand the servicing on, on the watch. You know, mechanical watches need to be serviced every, every now and then. And so um, it can be helpful in those instances. So I think what, what box and papers really lends itself to is the transparency on the watch. And when you're purchasing a watch, um, especially if you're going for something secondhand or perhaps uh, a vintage piece, um, tr being able to trust um, the seller and what they're telling you about the watch is super important. And having sort of the paperwork or the the, the um, tangible papers or box that it comes with um, gives you some extra sort of level of security when you when you are purchasing a watch. Um, I think the biggest question. Um, is um, how much value the box and papers actually uh, adds to the purchase um, which again like I think it's super subjective but I would not value the original box and papers more than um, more than uh, I, it's, it's very difficult to tell but I think the, the general consensus has been no more than 400 US dollars is what the box and pa original box and papers is worth. I think if you're purchasing from a dealer that you trust and know, I don't think it really adds all that much value if you are able to, um, if you're able to trust the, 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 the seller that you're maybe purchasing it from. Now, on the other hand, a lot of people say, you know, the box and papers are really superfluous. You want to just buy the watch from the, from the dealer the biggest thing that most people are concerned with is the, the service history of it. And so if a, a dealer or a watchmaker and has serviced the watch prior to maybe selling it to you, that really gives you confidence in the fact that um, the watch is going to run really well. And so a lot of the times when people say, oh, original box and papers, people are like, okay, well, you keep the box and papers. Has it been serviced? Has it been, you know, can you trace, tell me the, the traceability of, of the owners of this watch, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so that can be um, 
how some people approach the uh, the problem. There's um. So, so I think for the most part, you're looking at maybe at most 500 US dollars of added value that the original box and papers comes from, uh, sort of amounts to. Um, and it can go either way. I think it really ends up being your preference on and your relationship with the uh, seller. Now, from a collector's perspective, having the box and papers, I think, allows you to, um, I don't know, have a little bit more fun in, in collecting. I'll speak from the vintage side of things because I think that's where I sort of err on a lot of the times. Having the original box and paper sort of integrates you into the time period that the watch was sold and you can really dive into, you know, that time period. I'm, whenever I, when I'm looking at this Longines that I, that I mentioned, um, it, it makes me sort of, you know, knowing that the watch was manufactured in 1951, it sort of puts me into that time frame and puts me into sort of this um, creative mindset where you can kind of pretend and, and think about, you know, what was happening in 1951. Okay, we had just come out of World War, World War II had just um, just ended. Um, and in the United States, I think there was a pretty big boom period for, for, the, for the country and that's where this watch was sold. Um, and then you think about the person who saw it in the, in the store and saw that 7150 and probably imagined it to be a fairly expensive price but you know it's it's those sort of um, fun sort of mind teasers that, that can 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 be fun to do if you do have the original box and papers I think also when you are purchasing vintage watches and you want to have some sort of assurance that the watch is what it is and, and understand where it was sold having the original box and paperwork can be helpful if you are spending a lot of money on, on a vintage watch, you kind of want to know exactly where it has been. And so, um, again, it sort of um, adds to the provenance that you would be able to trace with that specific watch. So from a collector's perspective, I think it allows you to be, um, I, I guess you could get a little bit more enjoyment out of it if you do have the original box and papers with the watch. But I know a lot of vintage collectors who really want to collect specific individual watches I know a really good um, a, a really um, a really big collector of this specific yacht timing watch and what he likes is just the different variations of the pieces and I think it's because he that's the type of collector he is he wants to know about the underlying um, differences between all the variations of the specific yacht timer and that's a totally fine way of collecting um, and so having box and papers can be helpful in some circumstances with that but if you are looking for the small differences or small iterations on a specific reference, um, it becomes less significant to have those and more significant to have the different variations in the, um, in the specific reference. All in all, I think box and papers can be a really fun way of enjoying watches. You can tell the story of the watch a little bit more. You can have some assurance if you are purchasing the watches. But at the end of the day, it's your personal preference. If you like having the box and papers with your watch, then it can come in handy. If you don't really mind, if it doesn't come with that with it, you can still enjoy watches equally as much. Let me know what you think about having the uh, original box and papers with a watch. I think it's an interesting topic that a lot of collectors sort of go through as they're um, looking to buy um, vintage watches. Love to hear your thoughts. You can hit us up on our website or on our social medias. If you are new to the Life Nurse podcast, be sure to follow us and you'll be notified when we do upload. We upload one podcast every single week on Tuesday, so um, be sure to follow this podcast. Be sure to f uh, share this podcast with a friend who might be interested in watches, um, and if you don't know, we have a YouTube channel where we upload videos every single week. We'd love to have you part of our family over on YouTube. We also have an um, a article in the editorial section of our website every week with every one of our videos, so you can check that out as well. If you wouldn't mind reading this podcast, you would always help me out. And with this, guys, thank you so much for listening to this podcast, and until next time.